So listen, I hate to toot my own trumpet, right? But I actually think that I have created the perfect bookstore crawl around New York City. So I made some friends at a party and we were all chatting about our love and our passion for independent bookstores around this city. And it was independent bookstore day. And so we planned to meet up and hang out and do a bookstore crawl. And basically do a little route, hang out and try and take off as many cool bookstores as we could. And so I took it upon myself <laughs> to come up with the perfect route. And then I was like, oh my gosh, you guys would love this. So I wanna tell you about what the route is. I actually think it's a little bit genius because there's only 40 minutes of walking total time, but you start in Tribeca and you end in the East Village and the place that you end in the East Village is called Book Club and it's a bar. They have like a wine bar. How cool is that? And there's also optional extras that you could add on if you have a little bit more time. We met in the evening at like 5 p.m. So we kind of had to um, get a little wiggle on because the bookstores obviously close. <laughs> like most of them close at seven, I think. But it's a pretty casual stroll. Um, there's usually about an eight minute walk between bookstores. So you really break up the total amount of walking time. And we went yesterday and had a freaking blast. Also, all of the employees at the bookstores were so nice and just wanted to chat about books. I made some purchases, which, I will show you um, after this, but it's such a good little route. I always um, pin things on my Google Maps that I wanna go to, so then you can kind of see it quite visually. My starting point is the mysterious bookshop in Tribeca. This is a bookstore that just sells books about murders, mysteries, and crime. So cool, um, such a cool concept. They have lots of Agatha Christie books. They also have a lot of the Sherlock Holmes novels by Arthur Conan Doyle, but they also have a load of really cool kind of classic crime and murder and mystery novels, which were so beautiful. The covers are absolutely stunning. And I love this rather ominous sign on the door, kind of encouraging people not to steal from the bookstore. It was beautiful here. The vibes were immaculate. I love when a bookstore has like wooden shelves and then ladders. Um, and you see the bookstore employees like climbing up the ladders to get the books that they need. I just think this is the perfect bookstore and I didn't even know it existed until I started planning for this video. So there you go. I didn't buy anything in this particular store. My friends did. I should have showed what my friends bought actually, but it's too late for that now. So <laughs> sorry about that. I will say here there is an optional extra. Now this isn't an independent bookstore, but there is a big Barnes and Noble in Tribeca. So if you were just bookstore crawling, you could also add in Barnes & Noble. We wanted to do independent bookstores, so we didn't, but um, if you have more time and if that's what you wanna do, um, of course Barnes & Noble have a huge selection of books, so you could also go there. But I would say if you're starting there, maybe you just use that for inspiration and then spend your money in the independent bookstores because of course they really need the support. So yeah, that's an optional extra because there is a Barnes & Noble in Tribeca. Our next stop was You and the Books, which is where I started to spend some money. You and Me Books is a really tiny little bookstore which specializes in Asian literature. It's a really great curation of books. They also have all of the big sellers, so you can always find what you need, but they definitely specialize in minority voices. So you've got a lot of like queer voices, um, wild literature, but especially a great selection of Asian literature. It's in Chinatown, it is absolutely gorgeous. The booksellers there was so, so sweet and gave me so many recommendations. Their selection is great. You can also grab coffee and wine there. There's also some armchairs and a little room where you can go and sit and just read. And it felt very intimate and cozy there. Like everyone was sort of chatting to each other, like complete strangers just bonding over books and literature. And that is so special. So these are the books that I bought in there. First book I bought was A Separation by Katie Kitamura. I actually went to a talk a couple weeks ago at um, the Penn Wild Voices Festival and Katie was uh, interviewing Han Kang, who is one of my favorite Korean authors. And this is what it's about. A young woman has agreed with her faithless husband. It's time for them to separate. For the moment, it's a private matter, a secret between the two of them. As she begins her new life, she gets word that Christopher has gone missing in a remote region in the rugged south of Greece. She reluctantly agrees to go look for him, still keeping their split to herself. In her heart, she's not even sure if she wants to find him. As her search comes to a shocking breaking point, she discovers she understands less than she thought she did about her relationship and the man that she used to love. A searing, suspenseful exploration of intimacy, infidelity, and loss, a separation lays bare what divides us from the inner lives of others with exquisitely cool precision. This propels us into the experience of a woman on edge. I thought that sounded really, really good. And 
I liked hearing Katie Kitamira speak and it convinced me to read some of her work. So she also wrote a book called Intimacies. Um, but yeah, this is what I'm gonna read first. Then the other book that I bought was this one. This is The Great Believers. I have been recommended this multiple times. Also, I just saw I've got a bookmark from you and me books, which is so cool. And that's why we shop independent, baby. The Great Believers is by Rebecca Mackay. And someone I was on this bookstore crawl with had also bought this book. And so we decided to buddy read it, which I think is gonna be really sweet. I love reading a book at the same time as someone else and discussing it. So this is about the AIDS epidemic and a character called Yale Tishman. One by one, his friends are dying, and after his friend Nico's funeral, the virus circles closer and closer to Yale himself. Soon, the only person he has left is Fiona, Nico's little sister. Thirty years later, Fiona is in tr Paris, tracking down her estranged daughter. While staying with an old friend, a famous photographer who documented the Chicago crisis, she finds herself finally grappling with the devastating ways AIDS affected her life. The two intertwining stories take us through the heartbreak of the 80s and the chaos of the modern world, as both Yale and Fiona struggle to find goodness in the midst of disaster. I think this sounds really fascinating. It's definitely also an interesting conversation about who is entitled to write about these stories, like the AIDS epidemic, should Rebecca Mackay be writing about that? So I'm also intrigued by that kind of discourse, but I wanted to read this book because um, I've heard great things and so many people have been recommending this to me. So I've heard like, if you're a Little Life fan, this is equally devastating. But before I move on to the next bookstore, I just wanted to let you know that today's video is very, very kindly brought to you by Squarespace. Now, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building a beautiful website or an online store. With tons of incredible templates, you don't need any coding experience, which is music to my ears, because sometimes you have a vision and you don't know how to execute the vision without that kind of coding experience. You don't need it. Squarespace has amazing templates, which are a great starting point. You can then customize it, make it your own. You can add a blog so you can share more with your audience, tell them what you're up to, what's going on behind the scenes. There's also great analytical tools so you can check what people actually want to see you create, you know, what are the most popular things on your website so that you can invest your time more wisely, create more of that content that your audience is loving. Often a website is the first surface that future customers will come into contact with and so it's really important that your website looks chef's kiss and with Squarespace that is guaranteed. So I highly recommend, I think it's an absolutely great resource. And if this is the kick up the backside that you need to get started, make that website, have a play around, take this sign because you can actually get a free trial of Squarespace over at squarespace.com. And then when you're ready to launch your beautiful new website, you can use the code jackinthebooks at squarespace.com slash jackinthebooks to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain, you lucky sausage. The link will be in the description down below and now. Onwards. Then we continued walking. Now at this point, there are two bookstores that are quite close together. There's the Eon bookstore, which has a really interesting selection of kind of art books. Um, not so much fiction and like novels, but more like coffee table books and picture books, things that you can kind of flick through. They also sell records. There's a record player in the corner. Honestly, this bookstore for me was one I just wanted to have a look around and enjoy the vibes. And then we actually skipped the next bookstore because we didn't quite have time for it, but there is the bookstore Sweet Pickle Books. And this is a bookstore where you can trade books for pickles. So you can trade your used books for pickles. Uh, listen, that's crazy. I think that's really fun. I want to make a whole video on it someday, but um, that's only like a two minute walk from the Eon bookstore. Um, it's on the route. We just, because bookstores were closing um, at 7 p.m., we kind of were running about out of time a little bit. We spent way too long at the first two stores. So we actually skipped Sweet Pickle Books, but um, it's on the route if you wanted to go there. Next, we headed to Blue Stockings Cooperative, which is an amazing queer bookstore. It is trans and worker owned, and it's in the East Village. One thing I will add is that they always ask you to wear a face mask in this bookstore, so if you have one, bring it. If not, they will give you one at the desk. They have a free little library. They have a great selection of books. One of my favorite things about going to independent bookstores is that often they have recommendations from the staff, and I always love reading the Blue Stockings Cooperative um, recommendations because they're great and that's how I read a book called Paul Takes the Form of a Mortal Girl which I really enjoyed. I got this recommendation from that bookstore. And one of their table displays in this bookstore features New York books. Books all about this city. And so I bought two of them. Firstly, Another Brooklyn by Jacqueline Woodson. This is hard to show on camera because it is reflective. It also has deckled edges. I'm really excited to read this book. For August, running into a long ago friend sets in motion resonant memories and transports her to a time and place she thought she had mislaid, 1970s Brooklyn, where friendship was everything. 
August, Sylvia, Angela and Gigi shared confidences as they ambled their neighbourhood streets, a place where the girls believed that they were amazingly beautiful, brilliantly talented, with a future that belonged to them. But beneath the hopeful promise there was another Brooklyn, a dangerous place where grown men reached for innocent girls in dark hallways, where mothers disappeared, where fathers found religion, and where madness was a mere sunset away. Jacqueline Woodson's Another Brooklyn heartbreakingly illuminates the formative period when a child meets adulthood, when precious innocence meets the all too real perils of growing up. In prose exquisite and lyrical, sensuous and tender, Woodson breathes life into memories, portraying an indelible friendship that united young lives. Another Brooklyn is an enthralling work of literature from one of our most gifted novelists. And then the other book I picked up was this one, New York, My Village, a novel. This is by Uem Akpan. Um, number one best-selling author of Say You're One of Them. From a suspiciously cheap Hell's Kitchen walk-up, Nigerian editor Ikong Odosuro and winner of a Toni Morrison Publishing Fellowship is about to begin the opportunity of a lifetime to learn the ins and outs of the publishing industry from its incandescent epicenter in New York City. But he is soon exposed to a colder, ruthlessly commercial underbelly, callous agents, greedy landlords, boorish and hostile neighbours, and beneath a superficial cosmopolitan, a bedrock of white cultural superiority and racist assumptions, specifically about Africa, its people, and worst of all, its food. Reckoning with the recent history of the devastating and brutal Biafran War, Ekong's life in New York becomes a saga of unanticipated strife. Yet, in overcoming misunderstandings with his neighbours, bonding with his true allies at work, and advocating for healing back home, Ekong proves that there is still hope to share our stories. New York, my village, is a testament to the life-sustaining power of community across borders and across boroughs. I thought that sounded really, really great. And as you know, I've kind of been in a bit of a headspace of wanting to read books about New York. And so when I saw the table titled New York Baby, I was like, sign me up. And those were my purchases at Blue Stockings Collective. One more bookstore. And so after that, we headed to our final stop, which was Book Club. Book Club also has a really well curated selection of books. And I always think that based on the books I see in these stores, I would trust anything they have on their shelves because the books I have read that they stock are all really good. And so I always think like, okay, I'm gonna find some gems on the shelves here. They have a really gorgeous outside seating area, so perfect for the summer. And you can also sit right at the front of the store. They have the windows wide open, so it's really airy and light. And yeah, it's just like such a nice space. I'd love to spend more time there. I think it would be a great first date spot, I have to say. And this is the book that I bought there. It is actually, a signed copy of I Could Live Here Forever by Hannah Halpern. When Leah meets Charlie in line at the grocery store, their attraction is immediate and intense. Charlie, with his big feelings and grand proclamations of love, captivates her completely. But there are peculiarities of his life. He's older than her, but lives with his parents. He meets up with a friend at odd hours of the night. He sleeps a lot and always seems to be coming down with something. He confesses that he's a recovering heroin addict but he promises Leah that he's never going to use again. Leah's friends and family are concerned. As she finds herself getting deeper into an isolated relationship, one of manipulation and denial, the truth about Charlie feels as blurry as their time together. Even when Charlie's behavior becomes increasingly erratic, when he starts to make Leah feel unsafe, she can't help but feel that what exists between them is destined. Charlie is wide open, boyish, and unbearably handsome. The bounds of Leah's own pain and love are so deep that she can't see him spiraling into self-destruction. This feels like such a vulnerable and fascinating emotional study. And so um, I was really intrigued by this and I did pick it up. They have uh, this little sticker that says book club, books, wine, coffee, what more could you possibly want? And this is the East Village and the perfect place to end a book store crawl with a little drink. And uh, there's the sign page just there. So that is my little haul. Um, I did <laughs> buy more books than I was expecting to on this little trip, but you know what? Um, we're supporting independent bookstores and that's how I'm justifying it to myself. And as long as you can justify it to yourself, then it's fine. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that this gives you some inspiration. There is also, um, if you do have more time, there's also East Village Books, which I think is just slightly north of um, Book Club. And there's also some cool arty bookstores in that area too, like Karma Books. Um, and then if you did want to go up further, you could go to McNally Jackson in Soho and that would kind of take you a little bit further. But yeah, there are options. You can make this as long or as short as you like. There's also the Strand Bookstore, which is just um, a little bit further north as well. That's up by kind of like Union Square. So you could um, extend this book crawl for sure. But um, after a while, I feel like you kind of are bookstored out. <laughs> and 
um, if that's even possible, I don't know. Yeah, thank you for watching this video. All the best, stay in touch, have a wonderful day. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring it, and I will catch you very, very soon. Bye-bye.